the 19th century was known as the Age of Progress, um, and uh, it was just <clears throat> it was assumed, particularly in the second half of the 19th century, that things were spiraling upward. Progress was well in hand, and things were going well in the world. Now, the First World War kind of put an end to that kind of blind optimism, but it's an interesting sort of point of view. It's an interesting way to look at the world because, again, progress kind of has a bit of consequentialism in it, the idea that there is such a thing as progress. I'm kind of a counter-enlightenment type, so I'm not really sure that I agree with the idea of progress, but one of the interesting things is that oftentimes their view of what would be a good outcome is radically different from ours. Uh, for example, um, they would look at, say, the uh, to them, what is to them the barren wastes of Australia and say, imagine if we planted a whole pile of Europeans here and we brought civilization here with neat farms, um, uh, you know, uh, cattle stations, this sort of thing, um, and brought some order to all of this and got these savages out of the way and, um, you know, made a decent country out of it would that really be worth the cost of having done so? And they, I think that the consensus in the 19th century, and, and a sincere consensus, would have been yes. Same thing with the Canadian West. You know, uh, okay, look, it's just empty. Imagine how much wheat we could grow there. Um, imagine how much, uh, how, how many people we could settle there. Uh, if we just clear all these pesky wild animals off the land and, you know, the savages who live there, they're semi-humans anyway, we clear them off and bring civilization here, we'll, we'll have, we will have improved the way things are out there. Um, and, you know, people are inclined to be very cynical about that kind of thing nowadays, but I think there's a great deal of evidence that, that a lot of people in the 19th century did actually believe this, or at least, <laughs> conveniently, a lot of European people believe this, that the on, uh, the spreading of European civilization was the spreading of civilization itself. So it didn't really much matter what you did to the other civilizations. Your whole point was to turn them into you, because look at the world. We're the most powerful. We've you know, got the best medicines. We've got the best farming techniques, etc., etc. Therefore, our way is better than your way. Uh, blah. You know. And, of course, the result is genocides, um, the two world wars, the Cold War, arguably even the War on Terror, etc., etc., Nothing is without unintended consequences. Um, and the issue of, okay, when, you, when you're going to judge the outcomes, your outcome has to be narrowly defined and definable. <laughs> uh, but I would argue that the butterfly effect, i.e. all those other things that I mentioned, the byproducts of what the 19th century optimists would have called progress, kind of make a mockery of the whole idea of uh, the whole view of the 19th century as the age of progress. It was the age when people believed that progress was taking place, I would argue, but it's not necessarily the age in which progress was taking place. Um, <clears throat> so, um, you have two sort of points of view here. You have the consequentialist argument that says that you can actually measure outcomes, and then you have the butterfly effect. How are you... How are you going to square those two? You know, the butterfly effect versus um, consequentialism. The, the idea that you actually can measure outcomes. That you can actually create a situation where ceteris is paribus. And I don't believe that, that such a situation exists. Or even if it does exist, we wouldn't have the necessary tools to determine that it did exist. We would just be guessing. Again, the butterfly effect. <laughs> you know. <coughs> Excuse me. How do you... How do you measure an outcome? How do you decide this is an outcome and we'll just sort of take everything, all the other stuff out of it? And you've also maybe decided that one outcome is good and then you might change your mind a few years later, but you've already been two years into this sort of goal that you're moving towards and uh, I just it becomes so messy that I would say that consequentialism has a flaw in its very thinking, the very heart of the way people think about it. Because it assumes that you can measure outcomes concretely. You, it's assuming that ceteris is paribus. It's never paribus. And again, even if it were, we wouldn't know it. Um, so is it actually possible to say that, that an outcome has taken place? Is 
is human um, is sort of the drama of existence measurable that way we have before during and after we have a desired outcome we have what we do to get to that outcome and then we have an outcome does reality fit neatly into that I don't think that it does um, uh, for so many reasons there's the butterfly effect there's the fact that you may actually change your mind you may actually decide that you've you've had a skewed view of what's right now and I call that again the rolling window of totalitarian certainty where the 19th century people had this sort of view of what <clears throat> progress was and they were very confident about it and they spread it all over the world uh, you know somewhat ruthlessly but in their view they were simply spreading civilization now in the then in the 20th century we had a different view of things especially in the second half of the 20th century we had a much less blind amount of optimism in Western humanism and things like that and, and certainly in progress and we sort of said okay 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 we thought we were right in the 19th century now we are right and now of course we're in the 21st century the postmodern age and it sort of says well we're not quite all that comfortable with ideas of right because when you have ideas of absolute right and absolute wrong you have things like Auschwitz you know in one form or another Consequentialism assumes that there actually is a right and wrong, and it actually assumes that there is some way of measuring that. I disagree. <laughs> or, perhaps it's not even that I disagree. Two words. Prove it. 